forever. Dog. This might be the most relaxed I've been doing this podcast in all of 2020 because I feel safe with my guests. I always feel safe with my guests, but specifically the two of you. This is just fun. It's just a fun time. Even though one of my guests is giving me a death stare. What's going on, John? What happened? <laughs> oh, you know, do you what? see I the do. face that he's making? I see the face. I'm, I'm like, like, oh, maybe he something... lost audio. Yeah. <laughs> I thought maybe you were. Is he back? You were. I'm, I'm back. I um. I thought you were maybe playing um some sort of intro music. Um, and then I realized that it that Netflix decided to start playing The Crown season one. So it's now that is our intro song. Uh-huh. The Crown is the show's intro song. We got the rights. Yep. Um, I've never seen an episode of The Crown because I like to stay away. By the way, nor has John Hill. John has never seen true? the crown either. It's it's been a topic of conversation. I get in a lot of trouble <gasps> for not I, I refuse. I refuse. For someone who watches everything, everything, John sees I've, shit and good stuff. And I only know this because I yeah. listen to him on the air every day. But like Thank the crown. The crown. How have you missed that? I don't care. Oh. I also don't. Okay. I want, I want, I need like, um, like, but I did watch, I, I, I got into season four a little bit because I know who Princess Diana is. Go well, figure. Diana is the, is, she's the great uniter. And the only reason why I would watch it now is because I know her as well. Yeah. And I've seen her and Dodie Al-Fayed statue at Harrods a hundred times. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I've seen the bronze at Harrods with uh-huh. the eagles and the seagulls. I got to watch the crown. Yeah. I've not seen an episode. Every time I try to watch it, it's uh, melatonin you have to have a, a prescription for here in England, but not the crown. Oh. So I recommend to any English people wanting to fall asleep, fire up season one. Crown it let out. Me rec- let me um, <laughs> recommend and introduce my guest this week, who, uh, well, we had one of our guests on for part one. He is the creative director of O Magazine. He's a fellow yid who loves a bargain. And we bonded over that in episode one, and it made me feel really safe. You can follow him on Twitter and on Instagram at the real Adam says the one and only drinking out of a glass adam glassman hi adam and then i mean i've seen this man in every form uh, (laughs) intimate intimately it's true i've seen him in literally we've i mean you and i we've been to malls together in ramat gan israel yeah we have oh adam doesn't even know that you and i went to israel together the the good the bad the ugly you've seen it all I've really seen the GB and the U. He has a show on Sirius XM Bravo Andy called The Feels. Johnny, when is your show on on The Feels? Thursdays um, at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. And uh, that's the information. <laughs> is that all? And then you have also uh, your show with Julie Cunningham as yeah, well. Yeah, uh, Chart Flashback is tomorrow, the uh, 15th. And you sign up on, you know, link in the bye bye. Get it all. Follow him, obviously, on Instagram at uh, John Arthur Hill. Um, and it says here you stopped using Twitter. <laughs> Is no, that true? I, no I, I got kicked out because I got hacked and I was selling like 15% off sunglasses from Persia. And <laughs> then I couldn't sign back. And then I was like, wait, that's not me. I got hacked. And then they were like, oh, you've been compromised. I'm like, I'm verified. And they're like, sorry, you can't sign in. And I was like, oh, so I can't. I'm not on Twitter anymore. So you don't use Twitter. You know what's funny? It's freeing. I feel like stepping away from yeah. Twitter. I've just been very less active on Twitter recently. Mm-hmm. And I feel like my real life, I'm not just saying this, has thrived from stepping away. I agree, but I, I feel like I don't I don't know about uh, certain news. I don't know what's trending. I don't know what's really happening in the world because it seems like people are getting their news from Twitter. I think you and I have spoken about this. Like when I wake up, I go to the New York Post, Daily Mail, uh, yeah. Like I just do the rounds and then, but other people, they just go on like what's trending and they find out what the news is, but I can't do I that. do it all. I lately the daily mail and I have a laptop. Adam Glassman is literally like, what am I doing here? I have a laptop from 2016. The R and the F keys. I'm going to show you an example. If I eat something sticky, if I have like a no. Buffalo wing and I type, <laughs> Watch this. Hey, let's hold our keys up. Watch this. What's I'm holding this? my F key up. Look at this. There's no my way. F key. It's my fucking... That's it's John's John's it's like we're playing Scrabble. Yeah, yeah. We're playing Scrabble. And then, wait, do you have another one? I'm pulling my R key up, too, for laughs. laughs. My R key also pops off. Hold. Got it. Get out here, you. And there's my R key. Thank you my... for the butterfly keyboard you know, from the Mac. You know, it's so funny you're saying this because I literally 
Apple has all these new Macs with all these new devices. And I thought, I got to buy one this year because mine is about to do the same thing as yours. Good luck. Yeah, exactly. I don't recommend eating everything bagels over your laptop. I've done it. Uh, and then like a week later, I'm like crunching yep. through garlic and uh, sesame no, you need, seeds you need and that, poppy that seeds. air spray to keep at your desk. Yeah. You just spritz it out. I'm walking on sunshine. Walking on Allison sunshine. Allison from Intervention. From Intervention. She, I'm going to become addicted to the air spray. Thanks, Adam. Shiro. No, but- <laughs> Shiro. She's a Shiro. Wait, what were we saying about um, Adam our looks like computers? he's in like a, a sta- like a broom closet from like the like nineteen eighty two IBM. Yeah, like, this would be called holder. my office here at Hearst <laughs> at O Magazine. These are twenty years of issues behind me. I oh feel God. like I'm the only person here. Elena, my assistant, and myself are the only people that like trapes into the office, and I'm here for a few days. You're. Your hair is slaying. My hair Adam is looks great. Um, somewhere between Barry Gibb meets I don't know what, but I would almost say if you were in like Amadeus, and I mean this, it's my favorite movie. <gasps> you have like <laughs> Amadeus hair. Like I feel like you could write a great symphony with that hair. You just have creative music hair. That is so true. I, sometimes, mm. sometimes it turns into Graydon Carter, which then I'm like, okay, I need to chop it all <laughs> off. Which it works on him. Don't but fool I yourself. Feel like, Okay, I can't do George Washington, Great and Carter. So. Now listen, this is a Christmas show. It's a holiday show. It's our last show of 2020 oh that you boys God. are on, by the way. Yeah, that's exciting. That's correct. Okay. So flat. It's a big deal. Um, We are here. Uh, why I was excited. First of all, John, I was excited to have you on because obviously we're old friends. Mm. I haven't talked to you in a long time. And it's a long time coming for you to be on this podcast. Like, I feel like that should have happened already. So has he not done it before? John, you've not done this podcast yet. Uh, no, we've done your show, uh, you know, many times yeah. you've done my show, but, but not midnight snack. No, um, it's the first time, but I've waited my turn. I've let the, you know, famous people do their thing. And then I, yes, you know, so many celebs. You know. I mean, just week in week out, we are killing it. Um, but Adam, why this whole thing happened is because, and we discussed this on Tuesday's episode, but Adam and I were part of this really fun, um, like a happy hour zoom last week. And I didn't really know Adam at all, but I just, you know, was immediately drawn to him because he was, um, a funny man. Well, (laughs) I I was, was I was funny at this event, but John is the one who then DM me and said, I see that you're doing this thing with my good friend, Michelle. I go, and he said, did, it, did you do it already? I go, no, it's tomorrow. He said, tell her I say hello. So that's how it all came yep. about. All right, people. It's the end of the year. You guys, we did it. You figured out as many recipes as your brain could possibly fit. And now, guess what? You deserve a break from your recipe rut. And you can do that with HelloFresh. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. They deliver fresh, high-quality, pre-portioned ingredients so you can make meals that are delicious and nutritious. Making their bulgogi chicken tacos was so simple. I didn't feel overwhelmed at all. I just threw some chicken in, threw some bulgogi stuff on there. It was delicious. And I felt this way with my Green Chef meal kit, too. I love switching between them when I want to mix it up. HelloFresh also, it's a great value. You save 40% when you use HelloFresh versus shopping at the grocery store. Not to mention, HelloFresh is the first global carbon neutral meal kit company. Uh, full brag. The packaging HelloFresh uses to ship your food in is almost entirely made from recyclable and or already recycled content, which is something that, of course, we can all get behind. So why not try HelloFresh? Just go to HelloFresh.com slash 80Michelle. Use the code 80Michelle to get $80 off, including free shipping. Again, just go to HelloFresh.com slash 80Michelle. Use the code 80Michelle to get 80 whole bucks off of your kit plus free shipping. And then Adam and I were like texting through it. There's nothing more fun. I sort of do wish that I was in Zoom class. Like I do kind of wish that I was in, right? Zoom Zoom algebra. I'd be like, I would be saying, I honestly would be like so much funnier because I would be, it, you know what, can people, how do they do, do they, I guess they do like private chats and stuff. They probably disable that though. In high they school. probably text each other during class, no, which is what Adam and I yes, were doing. We were doing that, but there are teachers that tell, I, 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 that I know teachers, they say during these Zoom things, sometimes the kids don't turn on the video and they can't make them do it. 
So they don't even know if the right. kid is even there or oh not. My God. It's kind of a disaster. I, I mean, I, I started doing that uh, on Andy Cohen Live. I started turning off my um, camera during breaks because I would get up and do stuff. And yeah. like, why do you need to watch me walk around in my sweats getting tea? And then they were like, can you leave your camera on the entire time? I was like, why? Like, what? What do you need to That's see? That's weird. What do you need to see? Okay. So I do. You know that I, well, I refuse to turn, like, the girls who work on my series show Zoom with each other, and I sit here, like, Spongebob close-up, five o'clock shadow, <laughs> barnacle face. I'm like, I'm not Zooming with you guys. Like, mm. listen in. It's so the reason I'm on radio. Like, I don't want to, I have makeup on now, because I, like, you just you know, came from dinner. was yeah, out yeah. today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, it's it's very freeing not to have to put makeup on, I will say. It's sort mm. of, I mean, you boys want to know about that, but, but it is nice. But you do your makeup very well. I mean, I know you your really thing do. is all about yeah. your eyes, but I got to say, oh, like, wink. like, yeah, I, unless you have some secret glam fam team under your bed, you do your makeup really well. And the hair shiny, shiny. Well, this is why Adam is here. This is why I got a haircut. Also, I, I'm, you know, lockdown is starting t- two days from now. Mm. And I guess while well, this is out Thursday, lockdown started yesterday. So I happened to get a haircut last week because my hair was looking. I was full now. I was like, chicka wah no. Like, I need a haircut. I went and the Michnell call. <laughs> went nuts. Got it done. But let's talk about the holidays. <laughs> yeah, Michnell. Let's talk about the holidays because... I, uh, my holiday plans sort of don't exist, um, in a beautiful way. I don't really do anything, which is really nice. And I kind of love it. I sort of love a London lockdown, yeah. despite what people may think. I like going on walks when no one's out. Mm-hmm. I like not seeing people. I love a mask. I yelled at a lady at Pret today when I was buying sandwiches. I went, an old woman who did not have her mask on. I went, get away from me. That's what I said. <laughs> I went, get away from me without your mask. And the guy thanked me. No one here does shit about it. It's awful. Good for you. I was more vocal when I first got here because I was like, coming from New York where everyone was really anal about, yeah. you know, just being careful. And um, I realized, like, I'm not in America anymore. I have an American accent. And if I shame people here, it's like, what the fuck? Are, like, people get yeah. mad when you have an American accent. And you're like, like, put your mask on. An imported Karen. Like, we, we, <laughs> right. I am. I'm. Uh, <laughs> What would an Orthodox Karen be? I'm Karen. Like, I'm trying to think Karen. of what. Yes, I'm a Karen. Karen. I'm Karen. So I stopped doing it unless people were literally like mouth, like lips in my face, nostrils. And I'm like, get away, you know. But I find it hard to believe that people are not wearing masks there like they are here. I know. I mean, London and all of England was hit worse than we were to begin with. So people, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really shocked. Do you want to know? Tell us. It is literally as though nothing is happening here. And you know that I walk, I walk outside with my mask on. I'm doing full New York rules, you know, outdoor dining, like heat lamps. I'm really trying to be careful. I don't go out a lot. Real talk. I limit it. But that being said, no, people, if you, I went to Harrods because I'm a piece of shit. Okay. <laughs> Are we on? We're yeah. recording it. I, I, I'm I, a fucking yeah, piece of shit. I, there is. I have to say, when I go to London, it's the first store I go to. It's the first store I go to. It's actually a decrepit hellhole. No, I know, I go. but they buy I go. they buy things, and they have things on those racks that you don't see at any other store. And I'm like, the That's most right. ungapach, the most glitter, oh. <laughs> the most I'll kill you. bedazzled. Pashkid. I'm going to actually have him you killed. Und- you Did understand. You said yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding me right now? Are we actually related? We are related. John, I don't mean to make I you mean, feel like yeah. that. On some level. But like, <laughs> it means bedecked. I, you know, it's like overdone, the most Yenta like, wear, it. but it's like Yenta wear, but yes. made for the, the Saudis and the Russians and whoever. And well, I don't mean uh, to, I'm really not degrading any No, nothing. Any, any I want to look like them. Uh, uh, but I, I love a like cha cha sort of look. Adam, I'm on your side totally, but I will say this. I went in, they had like a beauty sale, so I bought some, you know, the Aqua de Parmi bullshit, whatever, on sale, this and that. Aqua de Parmi. <laughs> love. All these blonde, skinny fucking women, yeah. at least 10, maskless inside. Now, you have to understand, coming from New York or anywhere in the States or anywhere, seeing someone's mouth now Ooh. is like triggering. I'm like, can you cover your fucking mouth? I don't care that you got it filled. And I realize they think fillers, rich women don't want their fillers covered. Exactly. And so they're like, I'm not going to cover my fake beautiful lips up. And I have beautiful natural you have beautiful lips. lips. Yes, you do. You have DSLs, MC. 
God bless, and they've helped me in my career, yeah, okay? And I've had them. And you want to know what? <laughs> I'm joking. I'm like so wine drunk. <laughs> they've, did, they've been a detriment to me. Detriment sucking lips, okay? Yeah. And I'll tell you this much. I go to Harrods, and I'm like, where? And I want to scream, but they're like Russian mafia women. And I know if I say shit, I will literally get I fucking know, you'll killed. Be, you'll be so in I say the nothing. River Thames. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll be in the Thames. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking of a funny Thames. I'll be Timothy Chalamet, whatever that Shut is. Up. I will not be alive, Thames. I will not be living. So I say nothing, mm. but it stresses me out. So London is actually a hellhole. People here, and the reason why lockdown has started this week is because they could not keep their shit together because there's it's worse than the States when it comes to leadership. Fact. Yeah, but like, look, John's in L.A. They're having that in L.A. I'm in LA. It's a hellhole too. I mean, we're it's a what's hot, happening. Like every place is a hot spot. But let me just tell you one thing about Harrods really fast. I'm gonna drop a name, and it's a really good name. <laughs> um, <laughs> wait for it. Um, the, one of the, the second job I ever had in my career in television was producing Tori and Dean in Love about the bed <gasps> breakfast, and we had to go to London. Don't ask why. Um, and we went to Harrods uh, to shoot and it was a mess and they were like oh we need to eat can we just eat here at Harrods and I was like I, I don't I'm just a field producer I, I don't love know. that food hall I used to go there and <gasps> eat at that food Same. hall okay so Tori and Dee decide they want pizza not lamb shank or something delicious <laughs> they want pizza pizza and I'm like, whatever, get pizza. They want to sit at a table. They're mad. There's no tables. I'm like, it is a sw- a beehive here. They're not going to find a table. They don't know you here. So mm. maybe sort of. I don't know. So they found they found a four top because their fucking kids were there. And um, then the pizza. Well, they only had two kids then, I guess. You really liked them, and that makes me feel good. I do love mm. them, but this happened a few times. Dean looks in his pockets, looks in, he's like, oh, Johnny, Johnny, <gasps> Joe, I, ah, God, I don't have any cash. I don't have my, I don't have my wallet <gasps> on me. Can you? So I spent $400 on Harrods Pizza <gasps> for Tori Spelling and being a German. And I was a, a, a tiny, a 27 year old, no, I, I had no you money. Didn't get and the you never money got back? the money no. back. No. Of course not. No. It happened like 10 times. Can I say something? And I, I actually feel this might be the wine talking John Hill and Adam Glassman. <laughs> I want every listener right now to tweet a Tory and fucking Dean no. to give John his fucking $400 oh back. Are you kidding me? Are you literally joking me? The no, nerve? No. How I, long ago was this? 10 have, years ago? 15? I, so, I have so much collateral. When did this happen? Uh, this was 2008. Let me tell you something. It's not that long ago. The statute <laughs> of limitations, whatever it is. 20 years. You need your pizza money back. 400 fucking dollars? I know. And I, I did that a few times. That were, There was a lot of like, ooh, I can't find my wallet. Do you have any loonies and toonies? Looney! Okay. When we were in Canada, loonies and toonies, I was like shelling them out like it was just like Skittles. When we the were loonies in- loonies and the toonies. <laughs> when I'm going to kill him. <laughs> loonies and toonies. Like, and I was like, but I only have 10. And then got to Heathrow. It's like, ooh, we should tip them for this mountain of luggage we have. I'm like- but like ten, like I need four hundred pounds anyway. Um, love hair. Let me tell you this. I heard rumor, and I don't want to burst Adam Glassman's bubble because I want to live in the bubble. But I heard that the food hall food is like not that good quality. That it's mm. like they just bring in like shitty food, but because it's in that nice room, it's beautiful. I'm sure it's shit. Pizza. But like when you go there, yeah. it's sort of fun to do. But it's exciting. But then. I discovered, and they probably don't have it anymore, but at Harvey Nichols, they had this sushi mm, bar that went around on a little sort of like, yes. do you know what I'm conveyor talking about? Like a conveyor belt. belt. And that was the first I time I had convey. ever seen that. Where you just sit there and you just pick your sushi as it's coming I, around. I love the uh, way you're conveying the story. Yes. Yeah. Hey friends, at this moment in time, you might be looking to talk to someone about what's going on around you or what you're dealing with yourself. And if so, I wanted to remind you that you can always turn to BetterHelp. BetterHelp is professional counseling done securely online. And they have so many different counselors with various expertise that you're covered for whatever you want to work on. These are licensed professional therapists. So you can chat with over the phone or video, whatever you're comfortable with. However you want to chat, set it up with your therapist and do what's best for you. Another 
Kirk, BetterHelp is more affordable than traditional offline counseling, and you can start talking to your therapist in under 48 hours. Such a quick turnaround, and with everything going on, I mean, who wants to wait? BetterHelp assesses your needs to give you your own therapeutic match. They're committed to pairing great teams, so it's free and easy to change counselors if you ever need to. So visit BetterHelp.com slash Michelle. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, and join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they're recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states if there's a therapist who's listening and looking. And of course, a special offer for all of my listeners. Now you can get 10% off your very first month at betterhelp.com slash Michelle. That's 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash Michelle. Midnight snackers, if you love sleep as much as I do, you'll listen up to what I'm about to tell you. You should be sleeping on a mattress that is made for how you sleep. It should work with you. Makes sense, right? Well, you can find a mattress based on how you sleep through Helix Sleep. Helix Sleep has a quiz that takes just two minutes to complete and matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Whether you're a side sleeper, hot sleeper, you like a soft or a firm bed, with Helix, you can find your specific mattress based on your specific taste. I took the quiz and I was matched with the Midnight Helix mattress because I wanted something that felt medium. And guys, it is perfect. It has this great memory plus foam, which is a special Helix blend that makes the mattress so comfortable. It's a real dream to sleep on. Helix Sleep makes their personalized mattresses right here in America and they ship them straight to your door with free, no contact delivery, free returns and a 100 night sleep trial. And if you're worried that they don't have the cred to back it up, you shouldn't because Helix Sleep was awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 by GQ and Wired Magazine and Apartment Therapy. Just go to helixsleep.com slash Michelle. Take their two minute sleep quiz and they're going to match you to a a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. They have a 10-year warranty and you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. That's 100 nights. It's so, so many nights. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but I'm not worried about that. And right now, Helix is offering up to $200 off of all mattress orders. You're going to get up to $200 off at helixsleep.com slash Michelle. That's helixsleep.com slash Michelle. Wow. I'm about to belt a tune about it. I feel good about it. I love it. I love, um, I love sushi. I haven't had it in a long time. This is a great episode. Me being like, I love sushi. No, let's change subjects. Adam Glassman and John Hill are here. And Adam, I know that you are the king of the Oprah's favorite thing list. And I have a lot of questions. And John, (laughs) I welcome you to join me in asking Adam about this because I'm ready. I saw Adam's post the other day and I was like, you are in a like warehouse of swag and stuff. Yeah. And like, I don't care what it is. I've, I, 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 I just want stuff. So if you have anything to cast no, on, John, we want it. DM me, give me your address. I am happy to send all this shit to you. Give like, me this shit. I'm by so the way. rude, but I'm at, literally <sighs> asking you for, sh- I want shit. Oh, I and want I want stuff. nothing. I want to live <laughs> like a minimalist. <laughs> I want everything. Can I say this? John and I are part of an email list. I'm John. I'm going to call us out on the show right now where we get these yes. emails. I won't say from who. Oh for these, like, they do like movie promotions and things. And they say, hey, we'll send you a box of swag. Will you post about this on Instagram? And I always know John and I are on the same list. Yeah. The two of us are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, send us oh, the yeah. stuff. We'll, well do it. I got to yeah. say, I was a little jealous that you both got that BG swag. I the did not, I did not get any of that. I'm using my BG's tote. For every day, I love uh, that thing. I, uh, it is I mean, a nice considering toe. I look like Barry Gibb. I you do. I <gasps> wish I had that. So they was it HBO. They did not send that to me. Well, we're very blessed, obviously. But that being said, Adam, how dare you turn the lens on us? Uh, yeah, <laughs> when you are in Oprah's pocket, come I'll on. I'll trade you this tote for yeah. anything you want to send. Okay. Cashmere, I have some for you. No. Slippers. <laughs> yeah, what would you like? I want an Oprah button down and all of her hand-me-downs because I think that I could lengthen them to no, fit. No, you yeah. don't want I an Oprah like... button down. I heard you don't like to button down. And by the way, I think you're wrong. I don't. 
If I put on a fitted button down, I look like I work at a women's prison. I've tried it a million times. It doesn't work on me. It has to have a big collar or you're right, a puffy sleeve, oh, nice yeah. long cuff, something feminine. Or I really look like I'm about to like put the hurt on someone. But I'm in for like a skirt or a dress. I yeah. could do, um, send you know, a dress. anything. I'll wear it. Yeah, send John a dress. Well, John posted about these gorgeous shoes today. I was like, okay, let's oh, see the- <laughs> if John or Helvetica wears them. Let's see, yeah. Yes, I will wear. Oh, I, Helvetica. I will wear whatever you want. I but like I am a slut for shit. Okay, well, so give it, it to me. You are gonna give be. To you're gonna be sorry you said that, my friend. No, I no, don't really. By no. the way, <laughs> I just want to point out that Adam said to John, "DM your address." Didn't say it to me. I'm DMing you my address. No, my neighbors are picking my stuff. Say, Michelle, I have stuff for stuff. you, but. I was trying to get those pretzels to you, but it w- I couldn't get them overnight in London. <laughs> yeah, so. but I don't need that. I just did a DNA test and found out that I carry a gene for celiac disease. So I'm off bread. Are you off bread? <laughs> I'm off really? Bread. I am actually my, my too. I, I am gluten intolerant. I went to this fancy place in Austria for two weeks and they said, you of are gluten you intolerant. I'm like, yeah, you're Austrian. I'm Jewish. So you're just telling me this. But I, yeah, they're like, I, you're like, you're gluten intolerant. Exactly. You don't upset, upset yeah. my people. <laughs> but I still eat. I mean, who can't resist a warm, soft pretzel, quite frankly? Oh, I love. Oh, Bavarian. Love. Little I know. In a grainy mustard? Oh, no. Yeah. This is the best thing. This company is out of Boston. They make Talk these great me. pretzels, and they're called ES Provisions. Now we're into the Shark Tank part. Now we're into Sell it. Us. They I make these pretzels. I, the rest of the show is that. It's called ES Provisions. They're out of Boston. They're a small company. We had them on the list last year, and it's like heat mm-hmm. and eat pretzels. You literally just put them in the oven, put melted butter and some salt. Delicious. They hooked up with another person that we've had on the list a long time called Sabatino Truffles. If you like truffles, <gasps> so they combine. Mm. Oh, you don't like truffle. Some like people it. like, like some people like truffles, some people don't. But they create a truffle mustard. You know mustard. they don't like truffle oil. Truffle oil. I like a, I what about truffle like mustard? Truffle oil sometimes truffle is Truffle mustard. Mustard I love. Smear it on me. I like it. You like what? Smear it on me? <laughs> Squirt it on me. Yeah. Smear it. Yeah. Smear it on okay. me. I like it. Well, they did truffle mustard. They did truffle hot sauce. And they did truffle onion dip. And they, they no, worked thanks. together. They had this thing. <laughs> and when you're back in New York, Michelle, I'll send it to Go you. On. John, I will send it to you in California <gasps> if you'll eat it. And, but they are delicious. So that's ES Provisions. But they're not even on the list this year. I'm out. I'm out. Not you're to be out. rude. Fine. What are you going to send us so that's like not food related? And I'm okay. always saying that. This, <laughs> John is laughing. <laughs> this. I am sending this to you because you love your eyes. And it, yeah, I do. Yeah, and this is from Oprah's, now Oprah's makeup artist, Derek Rutledge. <gasps> oh he has God. now created false no. eyelashes for day and nights. I want with them. an applicator. Want you want this too? Okay. And an Send applicator and a and a adhesive Glue. that won't damage your eyes, Glue. by the way. And you can get walking on the uh, fab- You know, it's all about false eyelashes now, and we're all wearing masks, so you you really your eyes have to pop. It's nice. It's called Perfecting Your Presence by Derek yeah. Rutledge. You can get it on Amazon. Okay. But they're wow. great. It's a great kit. I'm going to send that to you, Michelle. Well, we'll that figure out how to you get want it. Because you're here. right. You're right about the mask situation with the eye makeup because, and actually, I really do have a great eye makeup story happening tonight. I used a new shadow. Look how yeah, pretty. Very nice. oh, it's really looking yep. good. I love your crease. Honestly. Crease. Thank you. Um, this Epicanti and Liz of mine don't quit. But I will say about <laughs> lashes, sometimes if my lashes are too long, because uh, some of the housewives, and I want to talk about Heather Dubrow as well, because I actually love Heather Dubrow, and yeah. I know you're friends with her. And I'm obsessed with Terry. Like, I, Heather's great. Terry is like, Tell me everything about Terry. Like, I love Terry so much. He's so funny. He's so talented. I think he's hot. Obviously hot as shit, but he knows Heather. I can't say that. <laughs> you oh, know, John, I grew, up, John yeah, doesn't know this, but I grew up with Heather Page Kent. Heather Kent. <gasps> so we both, Heather Page Kent. Heather Page sitcom Kent. Sitcom star. She was a sitcom yes. star with, with Jenny McCarthy. They were on a show together mm-hmm. a thousand <gasps> years ago. No kidding. Yes. Lisa Kudrow came on Watch What Happens Live, and she was like, Heather Page Kent? Like, she... Yeah. Didn't know her as Heather Dubrow, really. She was like, Heather oh Page God. Kent. Like, I would go into auditions and it would be like, oh, there's Heather Page Kent. She's going right. to get the job. Yeah. 
So we are we're family friends. Well, Terry, to me, um, I even though I've not been botched, I want him to debotch. I want to like crooked my tits up and yeah. go on that show with like a dimple, like a huge like cannonball went through my ass cheeks and be like, fix it. Like he's such a genius. This is the thing. They actually will say to people, sorry, we don't want to touch you and we can't help you. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. Have you seen that on Botch? Like some people go in like really kind of right. uh, screwed up and they want more and yeah. they need more and they need this. And they'll say, nope, we will not touch you. And I have to because say, they I that they're dealing that. with a mentally ill person. No, but I respect yeah. that they are, you know, will do that. Well, I also love Dr. Nassif. Uh-huh. But I really feel like uh, Dr. Terry is like the fun one. He's like, you look at him, you're like, I want you to fuck me up and then fuck me up. Like, he's just, <laughs> yeah. Fun. He's a fun man. He I, I literally don't know him. I know Heather. And I'm still, I need to take a tour of her house. But again, it's like a weird mm. thing. Like, we oh. grew up together and I used to run into yeah, her a lot. Plan three months. I was going to say block a week. Yeah. Well, plan three months. <laughs> the two and I, same brain. Um, Adam, keep taking me through because I know you have a lot okay. of things to talk us through. Speaking of masks, I'm by the way. I'm very into these things. Speaking of masks, yeah. look how cute these masks oh. are from Tory Burch. Pretty masks oh. that come in its own little bag. Love. I want them. They're pretty. Okay, you want them. Want That's them good. They're really nice. How much are they? $75.99 per no. mask? No. They're like 30 bucks. And by the way, Tory's giving 100% of the proceeds to two different, uh, her foundation and another foundation. So she's not making I love a cent off this. She puts where Tori Spelling. Mu- no, oh, Tori Burch. that's like go back Tori to Tori Spelling. Tori Spelling is donating Burch. the profits to John. <laughs> We're going to the Tori Burch. Yeah, pizza. Exactly. <laughs> go Look on. at this pretty nail set. <gasps> from- I need that. You, you see, do need that. This is a company I- called Pear Nova. We created this with her. It also has like because all the nail salons are closed and have yes. been closed. And you need treatment, you need your nails done. And a lot of people actually don't go to nail salons and they do their own nails. Mine are disgusting. Let me see. Those are mine. Do you cut? Mine look kind of nice. Wait, John, do you cut your own nails? I do, but like I, yeah. I'm (laughs) real. Can I say this about nails? I want to say something about nails. I um, haven't gotten a pedicure in about two months. And literally the people who are living underneath me think Gregory Hines moved in. Because <laughs> when I walk in barefoot, it's like clickety clack, clack, clack. You're my like, feet are fucked up. Save you on Glover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just, it's constant stomp revivals happening above their room. And then my fingernails, um, I do, I haven't gotten a manicure in a long time. Oh, but I also, good. as a tall woman, I know I have nice, look how you tiny have nice my nails nail are. Though. It's shocking. Your nail beds like, are good. Yeah, yeah. you do. Little baby ones. I hate chunky ones, but I'll say this. I hate getting manicures because I'm so tall that for me to hunch over Ugh. the table, it's hard. It physically hurts me to get manicures sometimes. Yeah. I need to find, I got to open a salon for tall women and men so that the, everything's like, not that little baby stool on the wheels. You know, you have a real chair. It's just, I feel uncomfortable. If anyone knows of a good place, do be in touch. That's interesting. Uh, That's interesting. Adam Glassman, hit me with your next okay, product. I'm, gonna, the list. I'm, I'm excited. I'm going to hit you with this. Have you read this book? <gasps> Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man by Emmanuel Acho. Have you read this book? I have not read it. I have to say, honestly, we are three. Oh, I saw this interview. Yes. This interview with Oprah. I saw the interview. We are three white he people here. And I have to say, every white person needs to read this. He is a superstar, that He's a, guy. Well, he was an NFL player. He played for the Cleveland yeah. Browns and the Philadelphia Eagles. I love that interview that Oprah did with him. It was the first one that I had seen on Apple TV Plus that she'd been doing. And it was so good. I loved him, fell in love with him. He's so, so, so wise. I want that book for sure. He's super wise. I to say, even if you think you're... I, and I hate this term, but I'm going to say it woke and well, you know yeah, some people, some BIPOC people, you need to read this book. Truly. Absolutely. Well, listen, let's be honest. Let's have a real conversation. OK, because it's not like a bullshit interview. The term woke people who say they're woke, 99.9 percent of people who use that word use it as a front. Like there yeah. are people who are like, I'm woke, but it's a bullshitness. It's like that's not really real. Like you don't even know what it means right. to be open and to be educating yourself and understanding about the inequities of our humanity and how we've just been mistreating people for so many thousands hundreds of years so all of this kind of information is so helpful i definitely want to read that book. you will you will love this book you know this is a thing this is called humanity everyone is a human like this is not a trend it, it's it's mind-boggling to me 
that we even have to have this conversation. That's it is right. mind boggling to me. Now, mm. we all live in cosmopolitan areas and we see people of all races and nationalities. I do understand there are parts of our country, United States, where they, people are not actually exposed to people other than people that they know and see that look like themselves. But I really do believe that most people don't uh, are not born to hate. I really do believe that. Oh, 100 percent. But I mean, yes, like if you're going to take a baby from the womb and put them in. Yeah, of course. But I mean, it's just it's like, you know, woven into our fabric as Americans, like how we are sort of raised even in our school system or education, everything, it, things we don't even consciously, especially as white people realize, like it's in every aspect of our life that we're sort of being trained to think a certain way or, you know, expect things to happen in a certain way that are wrong. So yeah. what my point is, is that books like that and other things like that, it's just, it's like a, a chipping away at these sort of, um, expectations of our society right yeah. that slowly you chip away and you rebuild and you start from a new generation and hope that they can grow up and be in a much more and i agree with you that as new yorkers and even it's been actually kind of kind of funny here because i feel like it's not nearly as diverse here in london as it is in new york mm-hmm. and i've Which noticed I'm surprised it and i hate it because I'm like, i always think yeah. london is a melting pot of of a lot of people from all over different places there are but it's not the same yeah. i mean maybe because i live uptown as well so i'm used to just seeing like more people and all kinds of yeah. things but it's like been a little bit weird i'm like okay like what it just feels strange i think we just can't let it go i i just think we have to always oh my god no work harder and that's i mean and i don't mean to circle yeah. back to favorite things which i am but like Please. literally women of all walk all walks of life were asking us how can we help what can we do to make a difference and part of it was to help support black owned businesses truthfully and that's why we focused on it, because if you really even think about black owned businesses in general, like big banks typically don't actually even give financing to the black community. Only like 14 percent of businesses that identify their race in the loan application, black owned businesses receive one point nine percent of loans versus 83% for white owned businesses. So we just have to be more conscious of these kind of things. That's right. Adam, do you want to walk us through some other, just before we have to go, I do. some other um, products and companies that people can help support? Because I think it's important. Okay. She is an artist. Her name is Rochelle. Rochelle in Brooklyn. She makes these tote bags with fabulous quotes. Turn your wounds yep. into wisdom. Joy is an act of resistance. It's called Rayo and Honey. Uh-huh. She worked with us. We did quotes together. She has fabulous quotes. She's fabulous. You can find it on Amazon.com slash Oprah. Another fabulous. This is a great collaboration. This is a company called Glitterville out of Nashville. And they partnered with Sheila Bridges, who is a wonderful interior designer, who created something called a Harlem Toile. You know, like Toile, the wallpaper, this. has like wonderful yeah, like people doing things but they've never had black people in it she did a harlem 12 and on the back they have a whole that's description amazing. so they created all these plates in fun colors that's a glitter They're beautiful mill. wow i use paper plates i need i need plates so oh I'm no gonna... look john this i think this john should looks buy like these. a paper I'm plate shame you, john you need to buy these by plates. the way Sorry, john babe. this looks like a paper <sighs> plate but it's melamine so you can put it in the dishwasher and you're not you could just I keep reusing that. and reusing it my parents were going to name me Melamine initially. Melamine. And then something shifted and I became it. They were going to be like Melamine Collins. That was going to be me. I love the name Melamine. I think it's a beautiful girl's name. Okay, I'm going to show you something else because you <gasps> love yes. to travel. You love to travel. Some people love That's to it. nap. This is from E. Marie. This is a gal I know named Eula Lee who lives in L.A. She was a very glamorous, chic woman. She created the most soft, fabulous blanket. It's three yards of fabric. I look at John. He's plotting right there. I love that. It comes with a He's matching plotting. eye mask, so you could travel with it. Oh. You can nap. It's really good. What is it made of? It's a jersey. Why does Oprah Winfrey love a wrap? I swear that every year she has a brand new. Is it not true that she lives for wraps and cashmere? 
And she mm. loves to be enveloped. I would call her Temple Grand and Light. Oh. She loves to envelop herself in things, and I'd like to know why. You know what? She loves anything that feels like a second skin. So it's really about mm. a, a tactile, soft Sensual. fabric. So mm. truthfully, if she could walk outside and live in pajamas 24-7, she would. I do that, basically. Can I ask a selfish yep. question, but it's important to me, Adam yep. Gossman? Do you think if Oprah met me, she would like I do. me? I do because... Okay, can you look in the camera and say it? Because you were looking sorry, away and I, I can't was, I was making sure out. I didn't like, put schmutz He's on this. The yeah, yeah, <laughs> I think that she would see the fact, where's the camera right here, is that wow. you're a very you. realistic person about life That's and right. yourself and you're no bullshit. And she appreciates That's a, a no bullshit thing. person. Talented, Thank you, yes. Talented is great. But there are talented people who are bullshitters and you're not a bullshitter. So it's affected my career in negative ways, but I think eventually it's going to pay off for me. And I'm convinced it's because of Oprah. And I'll leave it at that. Okay. I really will. I, I, cause I, I obviously love her so much and I just, I want her respect. You know, I just got chills. That was beautiful. (laughs) But let me say this, Adam Glassman and John Hill. Last question. Final question. What are you doing for the holidays and for the new year? And I assume it means staying home because that is my plan. Take it away. John, you're up. Um, oh, I'm up. I'm. I have to say, it is. I am staying home. I'm going to watch Wonder Woman yeah. 1984. Yeah. Uh, Fun. And I'm going to eat something and then go to bed. I'm. I, I'm going to not do much. I'm going to do very little. And by the way, I've done that before, even when we. <laughs> in lockdown um and it wasn't that bad it was fine it's had, nice you know trader joe's sells this thing it's actually british or they pretend it's british and it's this like meat wrapped in like a flaky pastry and it's basically yes. an entire christmas dinner in a log and if you mm. put it in the oven you can just like eat it and then you've just eaten christmas dinner but it's just been like one thing you cook so i'm gonna probably buy that i forget the name love it <laughs> I love that for you. Thank I love, you. By the way, I love a New Year's at home. I love, oh, I, New and Year's that's what's going to happen worst. here. Yeah, I'll say that for here, certainly, there's going to be no New Year's anything. It's going to be getting drunk, hopefully with someone at home. Adam Glassman, Hanuki plans. New Year's plans. Happy Hanukkah, by the way. Or as Smokey Robbins would say, Chinooka. Chinooka. What is that? Yeah. Uh, what are you up to? Well, Hanukkah is now. This is the year that we're celebrating Hanukkah. Christmas is not anything I really celebrate, but my partner is Christian. So I usually see my godparents, but this is not the year for it. And uh, yeah. that's it. And New Year's, I have to say, is amateur hour anyhow, in my opinion. So I like to go to bed that's at right. 10. Wake up. It's a whole new friggin' new year. And I have a mm. feeling it will be the same thing this year. I don't know. I mean, I was built for a pandemic, I have to say. Because I'm kind Six, of... What sign so are you? I. I'm kind of... Wait, what sign are you? Scorpio. Me too! I'm cancer, but we get yeah. along. Me too. I like, we get I, along. I like to date a cancer. That's... Well, that's why John and I are attracted to each other. <laughs> but Adam, Cancers and Scorpios are good are good yes. matches, actually. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Go on. As long as it's not mm-hmm. a Sagittarian. I'm good with everyone but a Sag. So. <gasps> oh, I You know like why? Because it's next to you. I like it's next to you. That's why. You do like a Sag? Wh- when's your birthday, Adam? Adam? The 6th of November. Okay, I'm earlier than you. I'm, uh, I'm in, like right on the day on the cusp. But oh, you're um, on the cusp. Oh, I love yeah. that you're... I knew you were a Scorpio. That makes sense. Yeah. I love when people but they say, say they're like not that. supposed yeah. to be friends or date someone who's like next to your sign. So as for me, it's like Leos and Gemini's or Novos as yeah. a Cancer. Leos yeah. are, I mean, I like Leos, but they're hard people. They're hard. Yeah, yeah. Aries for me is a poison. Let me just say this before we go, because it is our last podcast of 2020. Oh. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everybody for listening to the show throughout the year. It's been really important to me. It's been really fun to make. Um, and I want to thank Alex and Tracy and everybody at Forever Dog for letting me do this podcast. It's been really fun. And to all my guests this year, and especially Adam and John, thank you so much for doing the show. Uh, follow Adam Glassman at the real Adam says on Twitter and on Instagram and of course John Hill on Instagram at John Arthur Hill but um, just have listen it's been such a shitty year it's like weirdly this podcast has been a way for me to cope with everything going on so thank you to everyone who's listened and uh, so your podcast is Midnight Snack is 
fantastic. It is one of the three podcasts I listen to. It is great. Is that really true? It is really true. I put it on oh, when John, I am taking you. a shower and putting on my eye makeup. Um, <laughs> Go on. And I, like, I, I mean, there. it makes me laugh. I love to hear you. It makes me Aww. miss you. And it is great. Congratulations <gasps> on starting it this year. It's a highlight. Oh, please. Well, John and I had plans to go to Eurovision again this year, and they obviously, it didn't happen. I still have my tickets, John, for May, and you know, I bought my flight at my hotel for May. So if somehow we become frontline workers and we get the vaccine, buckle up, Rotterdam, because you're going to see us in May of 2021 for Eurovision. Standing up. You probably love. But guys, have a fabulous holiday. Have a fabulous New Year to everyone listening. Um, guys, thank you so much for doing the show. Thanks and I know that this time is weird. You. I appreciate Super it. Fun. <gasps> thank you. What a treat. Yeah. Love what you. What a treat so. to see you both. Love you, Adam. And um, we'll see you guys in 2021. Have a happy new year. Bye, everybody. This has been a Forever Dog production. Midnight Snack with Michelle Collins is executive produced by Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. Produced by Tracy Soren. Original theme music by Gabe Lopez. Cover art by Ben Wiseman. To listen to this podcast ad-free, sign up for Forever Dog Plus at foreverdogpodcasts.com slash plus. Check out video clips of our podcasts on YouTube at youtube.com slash Forever Dog Team. And make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Forever Dog Team to keep up with all the latest Forever Dog news. News. <laughs>